The Flash vs. Quicksilver has been a staple of comic book matchups, and in general, people have been debating about which speedster would smoke which. Now before I get this video started, I just wanted to clarify what a speedster is. According to the wonderful search engine Google itself, a speedster is anything that operates at high speeds. So even if some of these characters I am about to list aren't classified in the original source material as a speedster, they still are by the general definition. So anyone I think of who can fly or run faster than 100 miles per hour or so, that was portrayed in live action, will be on this list. And just in case you don't know what live action means, it means action involving real people, not animations or 2D cartoons. So yeah, one more time, this is a ranked list of live action speedsters from slowest to fastest, not those from the comic books. And if that personally offends you for including a non-speedster on a speedster list, well, boo-hoo, cry me a river. I'd also like to add two things. Firstly, a spoiler warning for the DC movies, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Suicide Squad. And the DC TV shows, The Flash, Supergirl, Smallville, and Legends of Tomorrow. And basically every other Marvel movie or TV show out there. So yeah, you've been warned. Secondly, this video came out in the middle of 2017. Some characters on this list are inevitably destined to get faster as time goes on. Now that that's out of the way, here are 20 of the fastest live-action speedsters ranked. Number 20, Feyora. The first one starting off this list is the second in command to Zod, Feora. She was probably in one of the best DC fight scenes to date, displaying her impressive tactical training as well as superhuman speed. In her fight against Superman in the town of Smallville, Feora took on a cluster of soldiers and wiped them out in a matter of seconds. You can see just how fast she is here, zipping from soldier to soldier and probably killing them in the process. I mean, look at this! Juggles combos better than I do in Mortal Kombat. The actress who played Feora is 5'7", which is about 1.7 meters. Scaling her height from this camera shot with her surrounding environment, we find that she's about 13.83 meters from this dude. And the time it took her to go from her starting position to sucker punching the guy was about one tenth of a second, meaning she ran over 309 miles per hour. The fastest car in the world, the Hennessy Venom GT, punches up to 270 miles per hour. So Feora beats us by almost an extra 40 miles per hour. Number 19, The Rival. Edward Claris was the metahuman arch nemesis of the TV show's version of Wally West's Kid Flash. In the first episode of The Flash Season 3, the rival was almost an equal match with an inexperienced Wally West, suggesting that he was just a little bit slower than the Wally at this point in time. He does manage to incapacitate Kid Flash when he's caught off guard, and easily creates tornadoes with his pure speed, but is soon taken down by the Flash. Your average tornado has speeds ranging from 40 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour, but intense ones can dial that up to 300 miles per hour. Judging by how fast the rival was able to create a twister, it's safe to say that he ran well over 300 miles per hour. Cisco claims early on that when Wally West first started training to be faster, he was faster than Barry was when he too was a beginner. Well, in the beginning of Season 1, Barry claimed that running at 352 miles per hour was a slow day, meaning running at this speed was easy for him. But a few episodes later and he had to push his limits up to 650 miles per hour to run on water for the first time. Cisco's statements are really vague, but if we consider these as Barry's beginning minimum and maximum outputs respectively, then we can find the average speed of an inexperienced Barry Allen, of which in turn could be the speed that Wally was at. If we find the average of these values, then we can get a ballpark estimate of Wally's slightly faster speed. Finding the average of these two speeds shows us that Wally would have been able to run over 500 miles per hour. Since the rival is just under his speed, let's just say the rival runs up to 500 miles per hour. Number 18, Ezra Miller's The Flash. The DCEU version of Barry Allen follows up this list with his remarkable speed. We are barely given a cameo of him in both Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and Suicide Squad, but a scene from the Justice League trailer gives us a hint as to how fast this Flash truly is. Also, a huge preface right here again, this is just from the trailer alone. This character especially is most likely going to shuffle his way on down the list soon, but for now, all we have is the trailer. And actually, we don't really have to do that much here. In an article titled Just How Fast Is The Justice League's Flash Anyway, the writers do an in-depth analysis with a bunch of math and comparisons to real-world situations. In the end, the reporters conclude that for this Flash, one second in our point of view is 62 seconds for him. Now this is the part where I want to introduce and formulate my own equation not just for determining this Flash's max speed, but also several other speedsters on this list. We'll call it the speedster equation. V equals 6.7 meters per second times T over one second where V stands for velocity and T is the multiplier given in seconds. The 6.7 comes from the average speed of your typical sprinting human. The typical human's sprinting speed ranges from 12 to 15 miles per hour. Since these are all speedsters, let's just give them all the benefit of the doubt and make it 15 miles per hour. 
which is 6.7 meters per second. We can do this because in his perception of time, Miller's flash seemingly moves around like a regular human when everything else slows down around him. If he ran in a straight line for one second in our world at 6.7 meters per second, that would be 62 seconds for him. Meaning in one second, he could travel over 415 meters. Or 1.2 times the speed of sound. Number 17, Keenan Lonsdale's Kid Flash. We briefly talked about this guy earlier, but that was when he was just starting out as Kid Flash. Wally West is the son of both Joe and Francine West and brother of Iris West. By episode 11 of season 3, Barry suggests that he's just under Mach 3, but seeing that he's gotten faster and faster, and how he can face through objects now, it's implied that he is at or slightly faster than 3 times the speed of sound. Still, he is notably slower than his girlfriend, Jessie Quick, as she and Barry Allen both outran him in their practice race. Or maybe not. I mean, they claim that he was fast enough, even faster than Barry, to take on Savitar, but then he gets utterly manhandled later on in the episode. So maybe they were wrong? You know what? I don't know. By the time this video comes out, the filmmakers probably would have made a new episode already, where he's a lot faster or something. Just, just fill in the gaps yourself. Number 16, Jesse Quick. Jesse Quick is a metahuman daughter of Harrison Wells who, after defeating Gorilla Grodd and his army, decided to move from one parallel universe to another. She now regularly wears a slightly altered version of the original Trajectory costume. Even though she stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against Savitar, Jesse Quick barely escaped from him and was said to be well over Mach 2. Even so, she's presumably faster than Mach 3 since she outran Wally in the race training session. If it seems like I'm giving more time talking about some characters more than others, I don't know, some of these are just flat out stated. Others you gotta do some hokey pokey math. Number 15, Trajectory. Eliza Harmon was a scientist at Mercury Labs, who later morphed into the villain known as Trajectory after manipulating factors of the Super Soldier Serum, I mean the Velocity 9 Serum, and injecting herself with it soon after. In her fight against the Flash, Barry Allen reached new limits as he pushed his speed up to Mach 3.3. And while this was still impressive as he reached a new max speed, Trajectory was still able to smoke him in their race against one another, and when she injected herself with some more of the Velocity 9 serum, the Flash didn't even try to keep up with her after that as he knew that she was well above Mach 3.3 at that point. Probably almost, but not quite four times the speed of sound. But seconds later, after bragging to him about how fast she was, she later dissolved into absolute nothingness, without a single speck of her left. But hey, at least her leather clothes were still there. Number 14, Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. Marvel's interpretation of Pietro Maximoff, while it was the same character, was vastly different from Fox's version of the fan-favorite character. Still, this Quicksilver was able to catch arrows from Hawkeye, dodge a bullet from Ulysses' claw and unloaded his gun on a nearby table, and even outran a loose speeding CO train to save the hundreds of lives of nearby innocent civilians. Unfortunately, he's still pretty much picked at by pretty much everybody for being too slow to dodge these bullets. To clarify a few things, this Quicksilver can indeed catch bullets as shown through here, where he could have easily grabbed it but was just a little confused at what he was looking at, but he can only catch those that are from regular handguns. Gatling guns from Quinjet shoot bullets faster than any revolver could. Anyways, if you watch one of my earlier videos, we found out that this Quicksilver had to run at around four times the speed of sound to successfully save Hawkeye and that one Sokovian lady's little kid. Quicksilver and Trajectory are pretty much interchangeable on this list, since they both run at practically the same speed. Number 13, Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick is the doppelganger veteran speedster of Harry Allen from Earth 3. He was captured by Zoom for the purpose of having his speed stolen, but he eventually got out. We are never really explicitly told how fast he is, but seeing how he's a seasoned veteran Speed Force user, it's implied that he's faster than relatively newcomers and newbies like Wally West, Jesse Quick, and Trajectory. And as stated earlier, he was caught by Zoom, so he could range anywhere between Mach 4 to Mach 6. Number 12, Zoom. Hunter Zolomon is a metahuman from Earth 2 who, after discovering the existence of Barry Allen, became obsessed with becoming faster. Dr. Harrison Wells claimed that Zoom was about three or four times faster than Allen towards the middle of season two of the show, and the last time we were notified of how fast Allen was, before that statement that is, it was about 1,590 miles per hour. This would mean Zoom's top speed would be around Mach 8.2. That's before his transformation into... whatever that thing is. I'll get into that thing's velocity in a minute. Number 11, Melissa Benoit's Supergirl. Kara Zor-El, or Kara Danvers, is the daughter of scientist Zor-El who was sent to Earth from a dying Krypton to protect her cousin Kal-El. However, her pod was set off course from the shockwave that came from the explosion of planet Krypton. The show doesn't pinpoint her exact limits, but when Flash crossed dimensions and visited Supergirl's Earth, throughout Barry Allen's stay in her world, Supergirl has always been able to keep up with him, sometimes even beating him in races. Allen's excuse was that he always let her win the races, which we can't really call fact because he could have been joking or something. 
To help him get back to his world, Supergirl runs at her top speed and throws Alan back into a wormhole. At this point in the timeline, The Flash's top speed was increased by four times his old record. And we also have to take into account he was grinning at Supergirl while running, meaning he wasn't trying his best whereas Danvers was. So her max speed is most likely a little over 10 times the speed of sound. Number 10, Tyler Hoechlin's Superman. The Man of Steel was born on Krypton but raised on Earth as Clark Kent. Superman has all the powers Kryptonians get after reaching Earth. You know, the super strength, the flight, the speed, the allergies. Throughout the show Supergirl, he has been displayed to be just as fast as his cousin Kara, if not faster. Though both are still just under the speed of a tachyon enhanced Flash. Number 9, Grant Gustin's The Flash. The CW's iteration of The Flash is vastly loved by audiences and fans even to the point where people crucify the DCEU for choosing Ezra Miller over Grant Gustin. Anyways, as stated earlier on in this video, The Flash had to run at Mach 3.3 to cross a bridge in the trajectory episode of the show. But when he was enhanced by the tachyon equipment, he was able to go 4 times faster than he ever had before, suggesting that he could now run over 13.2 times the speed of sound. This isn't set in stone, as he is shown to be getting fast enough to even perceive the even faster metahuman Savitar. But for now, all we can say is that he runs up to Mach 13.2. Number 8, The Reverse Flash. Eobard Thawne is the arch enemy to Barry Allen who is overly obsessed with proving his superiority to the Red Speedster. In the show Legends of Tomorrow, Sarah Lance claims that the Reverse Flash is even faster than Barry Allen. But truthfully, that might just be an exaggeration as you can't really support that claim with just the naked eye. So what is his max speed then? Well in his interview, Tom Cavanaugh implies that the Reverse Flash relies on the negative speed force. This is basically the opposite of what Barry uses for his quickness, but it feeds on the power of the speed force itself. What I'm getting at is that the faster Barry goes, the faster Reverse Flash gets. So maybe Lance's statements were off, or maybe not. But for now, Reverse Flash and Flash are at the same speed. Number 7, Black Flash. After being abducted by a couple of time wraiths, Hunter Zulliman transformed from the villain known as Zoom to the uncontrollable zombie-like creature known as the Black Flash. Zoom was originally capable of running only up to Mach 6 or Mach 8, but the Time Wraiths must have given him a speed multiplier or something because when he was on the hunt to kill the Reverse Flash, Eobar Thawne didn't even try to run. He just stood there in utter fear hoping that he couldn't track him because he wasn't using the Speed Force at the moment. Also, we saw him easily catch up to the Flash in that Speed Force scene of Season 3. Judging from his reaction, it's safe to say that the Black Flash is well above Mach 13, faster than the Flash and the Reverse Flash. Number 6, Tom Welling's Superman. The next one on this list is Tom Welling's favorited portrayal of the Man of Steel himself. Clark Kent in this series has progressed well in terms of speed. Towards the end of the show, in Season 9, Kent saves Oliver Queen and Lois Lane from an incoming bullet. The gun the criminal used was an Intratech Tech DC-9, which has a muzzle velocity of 360 meters per second. The victims were about 10 footsteps away from the bad guy, which according to Livestrong.com, is about 25 feet. So we can bring back the speedster equation and find out how many seconds one second for us feels like to Superman. Well the bullet took 19 seconds to travel 7.62 meters when it should have taken just 20 milliseconds. So doing the math, we find out that to this Superman, one second for us is about 950 seconds to him. Almost 16 full minutes. Plugging this into the speedster equation, we find out that Smallville Superman moves around at Mach 18.6. Number 5, Henry Cavill's Superman. Henry Cavill's Superman has been controversial in terms of heroism, all because of the whole city destruction spiel. In Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, Superman was blasted by a nuclear bomb above Earth's atmosphere in an attempt to destroy the newly born beast, Doomsday. He died for like a few seconds, but was later revived by the sun's rays, moments later. Superman was able to travel from just outside of Earth's atmosphere to Earth's surface in under a minute, which is a distance of about 300 miles. Clocking in the actual runtime of the sequence, that would mean Cavill's Superman would have had to be traveling at Mach 27.5. Number 4, Savitar. Savitar is assumed to be the fastest speedster shown on the CW Flash TV show to date. He is so fast that he even appears to be a blur under the Flash's perception of time. In one of his appearances on the TV show, Savitar makes a full circle around Barry and sucker punches him around several times. In Legends of Tomorrow, under Barry Allen's point of view, Diggle's bullet takes about two full seconds to travel the gun's length. While Diggle uses a custom-made pistol, a cross between what seems to be a Magnum revolver and the M1911 Colt pistol. Well, the average length between these two guns is 8 inches, and their muzzle velocities average out to be 350 meters per second, indicating that 1 second for him is actually 0.57 milliseconds for us. Since Barry ran for 1.5 second under his point of view when he was facing Savitar, that would mean it was actually 0.86 milliseconds in real time. Next, we can use the circumference formula of a circle to find the distance Savitar ran. 
Using Barry's speed, Mach 13.2, we find out that the distance Barry covered, or the diameter of the circle, was 3.89 meters. After plugging in all of the math factors in, we find out that Savitar ran 12.25 meters in 0.86 milliseconds. 41 and a half times the speed of sound. Number 3. Bart Allen Bart Allen is a speedster who has messed with Tom Welling's Superman plenty of times before. He was so much faster compared to Welling's character that he appeared to be using super speed while in Superman's super speed vision. So the way we can find Allen's speed in the show was when he was playing a little game of tag with Superman. In Season 6, Episode 11 of Smallville, Allen manages to run half a city block in about half a second. Well, your average city block is about 311 feet long, meaning that, with the correct units, Bart Allen ran 95 meters per second. But remember, that was all under Superman's already slowed down perception of time. So multiplying Welling's second to second ratio shows us that Bart Allen can run up to speeds of Mach 263. Number 2. Evan Peters' Quicksilver Quicksilver was an instant fan favorite of many after X-Men Days of Future Past and X-Men Apocalypse. He is the son of Magneto, he became an official X-Men member in the 1980s, and he saved almost everybody from an exploding X-Mansion. Emphasizing almost everybody. Yep. Rest in peace, Havoc. So, I made a video of how fast this guy was last summer, but to be honest, even I have to admit I made huge underestimations and overestimations, and took way too many unnecessary variables into account. Like seriously, looking back at it now, half of those variables didn't have to be there. So I'm gonna recalculate his speed... again. My god, my head is gonna explode. First things first, how big is the mansion? We are never explicitly told how big the X-Mansion is in the movies, but in an article by Movoto.com, the article writers analyzed the various requirements and floor levels the mansion has, and estimated that the Xavier School for the Gifted should cover around 76,654 square feet. Next, how fast was the explosion? Well, no one knows for sure, so let's use the average detonation velocity of about 7,150 meters per second. If we assume the X-Mansion is in the shape of a square, then each side of the mansion would have to be 277 feet long, and the explosion appeared to be exploding near the center of the house. So the distance between the starting point of the explosion to the walls shows us that it would have taken 6 milliseconds for the building to fully be engulfed in flames. But in Quicksilver's point of view, the whole 6 milliseconds dragged on for 2 minutes and 20 seconds, implying that 1 second for us is 23,333 seconds for Quicksilver, over 6.5 hours. Using the multiplier in the speed formula reveals to us that he could run up to 456 times the speed of sound. But wait, he uses super speed while already in super speed. And this doesn't mean he goes twice as fast. Hear me out on this one. Simply just multiplying his speed by 2 means that under the super speed vision, he would have been running at the speed of what Usain Bolt runs at. Around 28 miles per hour. Which of course he wasn't as he was obviously so much faster that he is appearing as a blur while time has already slowed down. Running in and out of the X-Mansion to save the kids while the explosion is happening in slow motion. So here, since we are assuming that the explosion took place in the middle of the mansion, let's just say this whole area with J-Law, Beastie Boy, and the third wheel over here is part of the center. Doing this won't make the outcome super exact, but it will tell us the slowest Quicksilver had to be running. So he runs in to save Mystique, and zips outside and comes back to Moira all in just 0.733 seconds. Since this is under Quicksilver's perception of time though, in reality it only took him 0.03 milliseconds. With the measurements of the walls we set up earlier, keeping in mind we haven't even taken into account the distance he traveled from the safe zone where he placed Mystique, then Quicksilver traveled well above 84.4 meters in 0.03 milliseconds, over 8,202 times the speed of sound. And reminding you, that's the slowest he had to be running. If you take into account the distance he ran from the safe area where he placed Mystique and Beast to Moira, then this would be a much higher number. Now before I give you the number one on this list, I thought it'd be cool to list some honorable mentions who either didn't quite make the cut, or they were just too ridiculous that I wasn't sure if they were meant to be taken seriously. General Zod. Dude, that's pretty fast and reminds me of my uncle, but I couldn't really find a clip of him moving in a measurable length. The 90s Flash I never watched. Accelerated Man. Nothing really to comment on him because we've barely even seen him at all. Brandon Routh's Superman. He saved people from a Gatling gun, but he was technically part of another Superman's canon who's on this list, so I wasn't sure if I should have included him or not. This obscure girl from Smallville. That one Supergirl from that old movie, probably. I don't know, I never watched it. Jennifer Garner's Elektra. Yeah, she was pretty fast. She like moves around people in an instant. She couldn't have teleported because Elektra don't do that. But yeah, the filmmakers probably didn't think this one through. James Franco's New Goblin. He outran Peter's line of sight in just a second. Again, not sure if what he did was just a cliche transition to the next scene, or if he actually outran Peter's line of sight. Green Lantern. He looks pretty fast, but I'd have to watch the film again in order to scale him on this list. And you know I love this channel, but there's a point where you just gotta draw some lines. Number 1. Christopher Reeve's Superman. 
The most iconic portrayal of Superman is the one that finishes his list off. When Reeves' Superman was so angered at the earthquake that killed Lois Lane, he angrily spun the earth the other way around to reverse time. The circumference of the earth is about 24,901 miles. It took him a while to accelerate to his top speed, but when he finally reached it, it took him about 0.2 seconds to travel around the world. That would mean Christopher Reeves' Superman had to be moving well over Mach 584,173. Almost 70% the speed of light. You could also argue that this one counts as a ridiculous candidate and should have been thrown into the honorable mentions category. But oh well, sucks to suck down it. So to recap, Feora, The Rival, Ezra Miller's The Flash, Wally West, Jesse Quick, Trajectory, Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver, Jay Garrick, Zoom, CBS Supergirl, CBS Superman, CW Flash, Reverse Flash, Black Flash, Tom Welling's Superman, Henry Cavill's Superman, Savitar, Bart Allen, Evan Peters' Quicksilver, and Christopher Reeve's Superman. Also sprinkled these guys here and there around the list. Anyways, everybody, that was the top 20 live action speedsters ranked. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you honestly really did, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, consider following me on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. And for more of my videos, just click right here.